from The Australian. Here's what's on the front. I'm Matthew Condon. It's Friday, March 1. A convicted sex offender who was freed from indefinite detention after a controversial High Court ruling was hit with fresh charges on Wednesday. The problem is, the cops got it wrong. In a stunning bungle by Victoria Police, the man was accused of stalking one woman and assaulting another, but was released without charge on Thursday, sparking a major showdown in federal parliament. Peter Dutton has launched a campaign blitz ahead of tomorrow's crucial by-election in the Victorian seat of Dunkley. Internal polling suggests the coalition could secure a swing of more than 5%, but the opposition leader isn't leaving anything to chance. He says the government is asleep at the wheel. You can read that story right now at theaustralian.com.au. Send it to the Homicide Squad. That was the direction of New South Wales State Coroner Teresa O'Sullivan, who handed down her findings in an inquest into the 1997 disappearance of Queensland mother Marion Barter on Thursday. She says the possible involvement of fraudster Rick Bloom warrants further investigation. That's today's episode. Today, I'll be delivering my findings in the inquest into the disappearance and suspected death of Florabella Natalia Marion Ramical, known as Marion Barter, and who I'll be referring to as Marion. That was New South Wales State Coroner, Magistrate Teresa O'Sullivan. In a story that has more twists, turns and intrigue than a thriller novel, Coroner O'Sullivan's sombre conclusions in a courtroom in Lidcombe in Sydney's West yesterday tied off some chapters in this painful saga, but left the door ajar for the hunt for Marion's killer. First of all, I'd like to welcome Marion's family and friends who are joining us here in person or via the live stream today. I'd especially like to acknowledge Marion's daughter, Sally Layden, and Marion's son-in-law, Chris Layden, and her grandchildren. My thoughts are with you today. So here's a recap of one of the most remarkable and peculiar missing persons cases in this nation's criminal history. Marion Barter, once married to Australian soccer great Johnny Warren, was a well-loved teacher at the exclusive The Southport School on the Gold Coast, when, in mid-1997, at aged 51, she abruptly resigned her position, sold her house, and travelled overseas. Leading up to her trip, and unbeknown to friends and family, she had officially changed her name to the elaborate Flora Bella Natalia Marion Ramakel. Returning to Australia later in the year, without contacting her loved ones, she made a series of large cash withdrawals from her bank account before she completely disappeared. It took more than a decade before police began to seriously investigate the barter mystery. Um, Good morning, everyone. Uh, Detective Superintendent Danny Doherty, Commander Homicide Squad, State Coroner Command. Uh, New South Wales Government, uh, together with the New South Wales Police Force, uh, announced a $250,000 reward in relation to the 1997 disappearance of Marion Barter. Marion Barter was uh, 51 when she was last seen in Scarborough Street near Railway Street uh, at Southport in Queensland at a bus depot. In the weeks leading up to her disappearance, uh, Marion was seen with a, a tall male who was unknown to us and to her family. Finally, uh, a, a protracted under- inquest into Australia the case South began on June 21, 2021. Uh, it ended uh, yesterday. While Coroner O'Sullivan found Marion's disappearance to be troubling, she was unequivocal about the missing teacher's fate. I come now to the formal findings. As a result of having considered all of the documentary evidence, the oral evidence given at inquests and submissions, I find on the balance of probabilities that Florabella Natalia Marion Ramical, formerly known as Marion Barta, is deceased. A heartbreaking conclusion for the family and Marion's supporters, who packed the Lidcombe court yesterday, but hardly unexpected. In late 1997, 
Marion's daughter Sally officially reported her mother missing to Byron Bay Police. Catastrophically, police didn't deem Marion as missing, but in fact as a person not wanting to be found. Of this decision, the coroner was scathing. I find that the nature and adequacy of the police investigation into the disappearance of Marion was not adequate. But that was just the start of this labyrinth of a case, thanks in part to an Australian podcast, The Lady Vanishes. Amateur sleuths were unleashed on the investigation, trying to piece together the Marion Barter mystery. And one of those sleuths made a critical breakthrough linking Marion to a Belgian-born convicted con man by the name of Rick Bloom. Bloom, now in his 80s and based in Australia since the 1970s, had a string of convictions for fraud and had, in the past, gone under at least 50 aliases. The inquest heard evidence from vulnerable women who had been deceived by Bloom. As it transpired, In wild and perambulating evidence before the coroner, Bloom confirmed that he had been in a relationship with Barta in the months before she disappeared. He had also once used the alias Remakel. But he vehemently denied he had anything to do with her disappearance. In court, Bloom denied he had suggested to Barta that she buy a school in the UK in order to persuade her to withdraw money from her bank account. He also strongly denied he had had any contact with Barta after she'd returned to Australia from overseas in August 1997. The coroner, in her final findings though, ultimately expressed misgivings about Blum as a witness. In short, I do not accept as accurate anything Mr Bloom has said in evidence in the absence of independent corroborating evidence. She added, Mr Bloom's evidence in the final days of the inquest, when asked by counsel assisting, would you like to say anything further in relation to the disappearance of Marion Barter, was extraordinary. This evidence, along with his lies and deception throughout the inquest, has convinced me that he does indeed know more than he's saying. Coroner O'Sullivan wasn't done with the enigma that was Rick Bloom. Investigations by the Australian's national crime correspondent, Dave Murray, and others uncovered Bloom's eye-popping backstory as a globe-trotting coin collector with a taste for fine hotels and champagne. Also as a man accused of swindling unsuspecting widows of their money. Bloom, who lives in the New South Wales Northern Rivers region, has called the accusations a pack of lies. The coroner concluded. I make the following further findings regarding Mr Blom. Firstly, that he has further knowledge about the circumstances of Marion's travel overseas. Secondly, that he has further knowledge of his relationship with her in the months prior to her disappearance. Thirdly, that he has further knowledge of her circumstances following her return from overseas. Fourthly, that he has further knowledge of the withdrawals and transfer of her money. And finally, that there is a sufficient basis for a finding that he was and is deliberately unwilling to divulge this further knowledge to the court. The coroner said any future action against Bloom, be it for alleged perjury or giving false statements before the inquest, was up to prosecuting authorities to pursue if they so judged. As for New South Wales Police, and the continued investigation into Marion Barter's whereabouts, Coroner O'Sullivan was unequivocal. I recommend that the New South Wales Commissioner of Police calls the investigation into the death of missing person Florabella Natalia Marion Ramacall, formerly known as Marion Barter, to be referred to or to remain within the State Crime Command Unsolved Homicide Team for ongoing investigation, review and monitoring. So the Barter case is not over by a long shot. Or is it? Coming up, what this case has in common with other notorious Australian mysteries. While I've got you, I wanted to let you know subscribers can access more of this in-depth reporting anytime at The Australian's website. Check us out at theaustralian.com.au. 
www.ngo.org.au. We'll be back after this break. The Australian's national crime correspondent Dave Murray worked extensively on the Marion Barter missing person investigation. We spoke to him after the coroner's findings were delivered. The coroner came back with some very significant findings. Firstly, that Marion Barter is dead, that she is no longer alive, that she died sometime after 1997, the year that she went missing. It's what her daughter, Sally Layden, has suspected for a long time. It's not something that's easy for her to accept, I think, but the longer and longer it's gone, all the milestones that have passed without any word or sign from her mother being alive, she was forced to come to that conclusion. Dave wasn't convinced that the inquest would have satisfactorily served the Barter family. Only time would tell. But you have to wonder what's actually going to happen with this case. Like, how are they going to take it forward? Because it becomes just one more of however many unsolved cases that the Homicide Squad will periodically come back to and have a look at. And unless there's some kind of major development, it goes back and gathers dust again and there's no answers and Sally Layden is left without any resolution. It's completely unacceptable for that to happen. There are avenues to pursue this case further, and I think our police forces owe it to Sally Layden to be doing everything they can to solve this case because there has just been so many stuff-ups along the way, and no one should accept that. Marion's daughter Sally, a tireless advocate for the truth about her mother, left the coroner's court yesterday without talking to reporters. But the final words of Coroner O'Sullivan must have been ringing in her ears. It's fitting to end with the words shared by Sally to the court, reading from the family statement, the statement in which she described Marion as a kind, caring soul with a wicked laugh. She was intelligent, she was cultured, and she had so many friends who loved her and miss her still. She would always bring you flowers or a cake. She was a very generous human. I close this inquest. David Murray is the Australian's national crime correspondent. Thanks for joining us on The Front this week. Our team is Claire Harvey, Kristen Amiot, Leah Tsamoglu, Josh Burton, Jasper Leake, and me, Matthew Condon.